Chan. But of those four, only one of them had a player get banned last week, and Oni Chaners <laughs> are in a very interesting position. I like the way you delivered <laughs> that. Was that was a good that delivery. Was so, delivery. Uh, <laughs> Swiper was uh, banned. It was for targeted harassment yeah. when it comes through, and it's one of those things that I've, I've seen a lot of people being like, how could you ban them a week before? Uh, my thoughts on her. How, how are you going to get harassment a week before? How are you getting <laughs> banned a week before your team could go to land? But there is potential for because of that. It was normally something that I think was leaning in favor of Oni Channers. Elevate could still make land today. Yeah, and I think what we found is Richie is going from the Baldy Bunch to play for Oni Channers today, is from what Blue was uh, telling us earlier. And I think this is important. You know, uh, the swiper situation, to comment on that quickly, targeted harassment, any type of harassment is absolutely unacceptable. Oh, yeah. We had nothing to do with the ban. We, we found out about it and <laughs> were just as shocked as everyone else. But. Target harassment of any kind is not acceptable, so whatever it is. Now, the concept around can Oni Channers still do it, that's interesting because you lose a guy who's a who's basically your front mm -hmm. front forefront guy. You you lose a guy who's your damage carry. You lose your dicky dog. And you lose your dick. So how <laughs> how do you think, Nick, they'll be able to react to that? Do you think Elevate who already I mean, at last land I was talking uh to these guys and they were saying we feel like we could compete, didn't quite show up, but I, this is their chance, right? I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if you can. I think Elevate because they are that's like inspiring to them they already wanted this win so bad and then it's like this this windfall comes their way and now they have a real tangible advantage in this set i don't know if you're able to bounce back from a, a loss of a star like that i mean it's at this point where they're in a relatively comfortable spot right if you're going to lose probably one of your better players then just being able to say, well, hey, all we have to do today is win in a best of three is the best place you can be in. Elevate, the only way they can confirm themselves HRX immediately is to 2-0 against Oni Channers, which is not going to be the easiest thing that we've ever seen done. But yeah. it's, but it's in possible. Your hands. It is absolutely it's possible. It's in your hands. So do you think out of all of this, I mean, are we going to have to go to a tiebreaker? 2-1 is where that kind of that comes into the equation, or do you think that right. Elevate should be able to cinch this? I actually am going to give it to Elevate. I want to Elevate. To I think they're going to 2-0. That's a lot. I mean, I'm kind of like... <laughs> that's a lot. Well, wow. that's Oni a lot. Channers was that team that, I mean, when you look at their name, like it's a, it's a goofball name. It is absolutely something that is it's not really serious. But when you look at the players on it, at the time, last week, you had five people who are deadly yeah. when it comes down to playing on console. Now you have four people that are absolutely deadly, and one person who's been really good in their season. It's just not been on like the best, I want to say, potential teams coming through. So I'm kind of curious how they're going to be able to perform, adding Richie in, as you had said, being able to play with it. Because Richie has been phenomenal, but without Swiper... I mean, that leaves a lot to be desired. He's a lot of their flexibility, too, and that's what's so hard to replace, I think, about him. And you look at this Elevate roster as well. Shu, SJP, GR, yeah. Woosh. Like, those are all guys that have made just about every console war that they wanted to compete in. Kyle Conrad's the newest member of that squad, dude. But the rest of these boys, uh, I don't know. I think they have what it takes to compete. You know what I mean? Like, they've been there before. They've done this. They've had pressure applied to them, and they've performed in those situations. And I don't see why today needs to be any different. Yeah, it's it's going to be a pretty interesting, interesting set. Like, this is one that you definitely want to watch. Talking about consequence or not, I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched. And I yep. think now with the, the swiper controversy of him no longer being in the league for a year, I think this is one of those where Elevate, if they don't win, what a missed opportunity, right? Because yeah. they're a team that they need to invest in themselves. They're going to be around still. And uh, Oni Channers are going to have to rebuild themselves. I mean, this may just be a day rotation uh, with Richie coming in. And we don't know <laughs> if that's their full roster. But, you know, you definitely want to see, I think, if you're Elevate, the chance taken in your hands, 2-0, and you're going to land. Well, hey, some other big changes. Another big match, but I think the changes matter, make the match more important. So I want to go to them first, is that this time Xbox will be on 1.6. So they have their new aim settings that they didn't have last week. And I'm kind of curious, do you think we're going to see a meta shift? Because that's something that was actually very relevant in Europe and on PS4, where all of a sudden you start seeing your Androxuses get picked up. Picked up. You see Talus, you see Ruckus. Mm -hmm. like a it couple was... of these champions get turned up to 11. There was also a Bomb King hotfix, which... I think Bomb King was available for console last Bomb week. Consoles? Yeah. And I think they've always had Bomb King. I think he's been available. The I whole think, time. yeah, those those things seem to be PC, so I guess ignore that statement. What yeah. The Koga changes it, that's a big one too. The nerf yeah. to Master of Arms. Undisputed talent choice here on consoles. We'll have to see if more people just let him through by factor of that. If anyone has the balls to pull out the claws today, <laughs> we'll have to see. 
You know, I thought that the claw buff was just for Dragon Fangs, but it was really just like if you need to pull the claws out because you want some burst and you want to secure yeah. some damage. I mean, you could still play Adrenaline Junkie. I think that's the best synergistic thing because the claws do drain that energy bar. So you can build it up, get three bars. You got something to prove, ready to tick off if you get below 50% health and just burst somebody down. Get out. You're fine. Swing, boys. Swing. Well, Xbox not only getting their changes, but also have their big matchup today. And it comes down to whoever wins. There's no, okay, well, if this kind of scoreline goes through, then it's a tiebreaker. Or this, they win. This, they win. I it's love just, those. Whoever wins this set gets to go to land. And it's Onslaught versus Cryptic. Cryptic was known as Curse These Hands, which I believe now has Soldier Bot on them. Yes, yes. It's a lot to pick up. Essentially, them going up against one of their former teammates. You know, there's been a lot of conversation ever since, you know, the 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 change of Soldier Bot off that squad after the lack of performance at LAN when Flashpoint were able to take that one. And you could say it was Onslaught not feeling good, but you could also say just Flashpoint had a hell of a hell yeah. of a tournament, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Soldier Bot feels I'm pretty sure he feels like this is my redemption story. And I'm able to show you all that you made a big mistake taking one of the top guys in console and putting him out of business. Now I'm back in business and I'm stealing your customers. Yeah, I can't wait to see this one and it that it means so much is going to make it really the premier matchup for today. I mean, there's a lot for Onslaught. I mean, they have essentially never not made a land. Like, pretty much most members on that team have either been to all of them yeah. or been to most of them. Or and been MVP. Whether they've been together or, <laughs> or not, yeah, is like the big question. So not going to land for them could mean a lot. Do you think that if that gets taken away from them, what happens to the team? Do they break apart? Do they start looking know. elsewhere? Or do That's they just a team I wouldn't break come back up. together. I don't think so, but I think there's going to be some resentment that needs to get figured out. You know, whatever reason Miracle left, and I mean, save a, a, a death in the family, and if that was the case, then absolute, you know, well wishes for that. But save, you know, what Bodies usually has gone for is like a trip or a TwitchCon or something yeah. like that where you have it planned in advance, you need to go, and you say, get this one week without me, and I'm back. But that's the week that you drop the game. And that's the game that means you may not go to land. And if you don't go to land, what do these players think? They just think, if you were there, man, we would have, I mean, that's a whole thing. You know, that's money on the table. It's a whole season. Do I want to do this again and maybe have that happen? And that just means that I'm guessing maybe there is another layer to what's going on here. Hopefully their hearts are still in it. If I remember correctly, it was something to do with his internet, not just not being able to hold up the connection. And so they had to sub in Tay, which admittedly Damn. has been the one of the worst scenarios I think you can be in because there's not a lot you can internet. do. It's completely out of your power, right? And it's not in our power. Like it's not like the mm. server went down or anything bad. Like it's your company just couldn't give you the service you needed that morning and or yeah. that afternoon, whenever you happen to be playing it, and all of a sudden That's just unlucky. everything falls apart. Yeah. You hate to see it. <laughs> That's the reality it. of online gaming these days. That's so. just unlucky, man. But coming through that week has determined a lot that actually brings us to where we are right now, which that's, I think, going to be not necessarily, I think that's in the next to last grouping. So we do like two, 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 two. It's in that third set. North America is going to be the last two of today, as you can see Europe up on the side. But there's a lot on the line. I mean, other than those, I guess, two premier matchups, do you guys have anything that is kind of catching your eye for this week? Yeah, no. the totality of the play. I want to see good play. I, I, you know, I think if you're, the console in general wants to really, they're a younger league with less lands and, and a lesser, you know, prize pool over the course of their years. This is not, this is just factual. It's not putting anything against them. So you want to keep building up your prestige. This has been a great league. It's been a lot of games. We've seen more and more players keep in on a positive note. That's what I want to see, a positive sure. note, hot games, great competition, great drafting. And if we get that, then I am super happy and I'm excited for the future of console and really looking forward to land. Yeah. Well, up first, we do get one of our land teams coming to play. Vexed is going to be going up against OTP just to be able to get themselves potentially another win on the board or for OTP to be able to show up and be like, maybe Vexed is a little bit like someone's just behind them, but they'll have to find out in just yeah. a little bit. So we're going to go to a short break before we bring you set number one, Vexed versus OTP. Around the way. Around <laughs> the way. <laughs> All right, what up, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get the uh, Paladins Console League started for your Monday. Welcome if you are joining us just now on Mixer.com slash Paladins Game. My name is Rain Day. That's Pretty Air, and it's time to get into Vexed versus OTP. I'm excited to see these maps come up on your screen very shortly. And, Nick, just a preface, I, I said my point. What are you interested in? And, and today, obviously, some marquee matchups later, but still got these matches today. I think when you look at, you know, these matchups that don't mean anything for seeding or for qualifying or anything, that's when you're looking at a team like Vex. All right, what are they going to start practicing, right? right? Navi started bringing out some new stuff. Yep. I think that's what these guys need to do, to your point, right? 
don't mess around. Right. Don't play with this time. You know, this is really good practice for you guys coming to land. So work on something that you want to have up your sleeve for the big event. I remember, uh, you know, I used to train a lot of kids in soccer and things like that. Some kids, you know, take it a little more seriously. Those are the ones you just you, you love, right? Because some kids come through and their parents are paying this money, hundred dollars an hour, some crap like that, and their kids are goofing off. And you're like, Johnny, I'm paying for this. Is people are coming to coordinate? I drove through traffic. Make use of this. And I think it's like you know, broadcasters, production, everybody's here. Players, ten people got together to make this game happen, and Vex know it. They are hopefully going to take advantage of it. And and you can see the double blaster ban already, Nick. A uh, clear, clear decision as to what they do not want to let through. Mm -hmm. Snipers on Frog Isle, though. They'll take a Talus as well. Fairly early, Torvald banned out, so they want this pick just to stand on its own two feet. And I like, uh, I like OTP's draft here. I mean, Vex definitely maybe experimenting here. The Knessa, the Talus early, such an early Talus, we can expect right. that that's mostly due to the ability to track and the priority of hitscan here on console. But an interesting lineup for sure. Yep. New aim settings as well. Remember, this is one of those Xbox matchups that did get the 1.6 patch coming through. And Koga is not even touched here in the picks or bans. No. It's not, not over yet, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't know either. I mean, a solo front line, it, it's looking possible here for the side of Vex. They grab the Leon. That's going to be rough uh, on this barrack. However, he's got a lot of ways to maneuver, wiggle, and jiggle around some of that. It's going to be the Ash to lock it down. So... Draft starting to look a little bit more competent here from Vex. OTP, though, look good. Yeah. I like I, it. I like the way that Vex uh, rounded this one out. On paper, I like OTPs more, but because I know it's Vex, I, I do think their draft is going to come out a little bit on top here. I think they're the superior team. Obviously, they're the one representing this region at the event, as well as, you know, you can you can do what you need to do with a little bit of a, of a budget lineup, so to speak, yeah. if you are just confident enough to go and do it. And I just wonder, you know, when you do these things, does this hurt you in Atlam? Because if you pick this way, you give up all those things, and that's not Vex, that's Onslaught, mm -hmm. right? Or that's uh, Kirsty's Hands. Are you feeling this confident? No. Yeah, not even close. So what I'm saying, I'm curious why they go for the early Knessa Talus. And hopefully that really pays off here. Talus right. got a buff, but it was a couple patches ago. So nothing new there. Fortress Breaker for Slopidopolis. Well, 1.6 he got buffed. His knockback and his fall off. So a couple that's, of things changed. That's true. And then Welsh, I guess he does definitely prefer Knessa. And that, that started to be a bigger a bigger thing. We used to talk about, ah, sniper, sniper, they're both open. You know, get it when you get it. I think a lot of these guys definitely prefer one or the other. Like, like a cool mat, I think I've only ever seen him on Strix versus Welsh. He plays a ton of Knesset. Ooh, Ooh, baby. Welsh Mania starting it off big time. A couple <laughs> of shots. Aim's looking good. Looking for another one. And this is, uh, this is definitely the... Uh, I guess the win condition, you know, Knesset hits headshots on your uh, healer right out the gate, and yeah, that's going to do it. Man. Standing out in the open, breathe, though, that, ying, that, that ying needed to, to move, right? There's no reason you should be taking two shots like Absolutely. that back to back in the head. Aim setting's looking pretty good for Welsh Mania, though. Vex gaming out to a brisk lead here on the objective, 60% to 12. You can imagine not the easiest of execution thresholds for a life exchange ying on console. Just that's a lot to do to heal, to look, to damage, to then turn, heal again with your right click instead of just letting clones do the business. Slobodopolis here, zoning out. There's World Edit pushing back as well. One of our better Drogos players in all of console. He's been making names and splashes on that, both literally and figuratively, with the fire spits. And now on the second pick, Talus looking good and really capitalizing off of the damage that has been put in by Welsh Mania. Tyloo gets the kill there, but Slop cleans that one up, and now World Edit trying to run, but the Shell Shield will delay him just a bit, and a nice hook as well, but the Rune of Travel saves him. So far away, too. You can see a lot of the map control being given up by OTP currently vexed. Based on, like, where they were setting up, like, where that Rune of Travel goes down, they were expecting that fight to be, I think, a little bit closer to the corner here, but OTP... Not really putting up much of a fight for the map control. They would rather stay alive than fight from right here on the map. And Nar just going in on the Inara. Now he's got to make sure that he gets healed up. And he's just baiting her, making sure that he sees Welsh Mania has the line of sight and then ready to go in. Rocket Boots 
Not yet on the cooldown. Failsafe might trigger the dashes if he gets lower, but so far it looks like Westside's the one in trouble. Oh boy, Narch is applying the pressure. Earthen Guard coming through, and now he's got the Dome Shield at the ready if he needs it, but the turrets, the barricade doing quite a bit, and Westside with that Earthen Guard cooldown off. Ooh, that one shot might have done it, Nick, and maybe he'll be able to get it back with the Illusory <laughs> Rift. My god. Narch is just farming player damage at the moment on the Sonara. When that Earth and Guard pops 280, it's a pretty sad little damage number. It is. But so far, not many kills coming through for OTP. Ancient Rage pop just for survival instincts, and Narc is going to be top damage Still. in this game by a chunky margin. And uh, let's check in on the right side of Frog Isle again as Narc still just shooting Inara. It looks like that is still the case. Snark still just <laughs> shooting an arm. Incredible <laughs> gameplay here. Just shooting this Thagala. Shooting her again. One more shot there. And what else is he going to do? The high level strategy. Just shooting the front line who's been standing in front of him for nearly 55 seconds. Finally, Vex Gaming will push it in with the incredible tactics, the mental play from Nark. I mean, is this, is, is this not is this what the you mentalist? asked for? Is this not what you asked for? <laughs> When you Sherlock said I wanted to Holmes. take him super seriously today, I want to see everything laid out on the gridiron. <laughs> and just attacking him mentally, you know? Absolutely. Look at that. 35,000 damage. You could say, I mean, it's optimal, right? What else is he going to do? <laughs> optimal indeed, dude. I'm getting some flashbacks. Oh, that for one kill. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hardest earned kill. 35,000 damage to get one kill. <laughs> Optimal, optimal. Oh, big narc, dude. <laughs> big narc. Value, value. One. Well, we get to watch, like, Cauterize 2 now. We'll see if he can get it done in oh, uh, man. 30 seconds instead of a minute. But Rejuvenate 2 from Anara, so, you know, she's, Damn it. she's trying to keep... She's trying to somehow make it happen. West side, I, I just wonder how that must have felt on the opposite side. Really feeling like uh, this was not a fun matchup. And now, Narc, what you gonna do about it, buddy? <laughs> Gets a seismic crash. Narc says, I'm gonna heal up. And the wheel turns and on and on. I'm just going to keep on shooting you. <laughs> she stands to the side, and it's just this, uh, it's it's day and night. It's yin and yang. A little bit of chaos mixed in between. 42% here for Vex Gaming. West side back to full health. What's new? And Narc shooting him yet again. Anytime somebody steps out in a line of sight of Welsh, they are just getting pelted. Big damage, big kills coming through. Cert dominance up over the top just to make sure seizing control of a lot of forward zone here. The payload is going to go vexed way. The they will have the opportunity to just roll this one right up to the home stretch, pretty much, based on where Ash is currently seated. The only thing I don't like about this is the Strix, I think, from OTP. Jay Tyloo hasn't been able to get much done, and that's no fault of his own. Welsh is playing well. Narc is obviously uh, getting a lot of focus from west side and back and forth. Maybe Anara and Barrick need to just get a room over here. I mean, he's, he's too, like... Need, need to just work work with your team, you know? This isn't a one-on-one. -on -one. And I think at this point, though, it's really hurting because this is a lot of the sustain, and Anara's literally just been shooting at Barrack all game, too. Yeah, I mean, it, when Where's you look at Tinker and Barrack, the reason he's often picked up is to ignore front lines and get relevant damage onto someone in the back line. True power's coming through here. On Leon, oh, the rock actually saved her. Do you see the splash? Under threat of going off the map. That Blitz Upper made a little bit of a charred indent on that rock. And Narc back to the Ghost Realm. As he gets taken down by LZ Legends. Finally, this Leon starting to get involved. Two streak. Minute and 22. Things are happening. Things are starting to happen, Big but things. gotta really make this count. And Slopidopolis on this right side. I, don't, I, I like Ash on this front versus the Leon for sure. Oof. And again, Welsh. The smallest of margins finding these big tags on Kinesa. Slop's coming around the corner here. Strix is none the wiser. That'll do. Or just didn't feel like uh, addressing that issue. Blocked with the game clone. Cute. Good play. But no cigar. Yeah, but good play. Optimal there for sure. Just stops her from aggressing. Saves Badge Tiger's life potentially because of that shoulder mash hits. You never know. They have a chance, but it looks like it's going to be a 3-0. Turning into a 4-0. And that's game one. Vexed. Op. To mole. Leaving their opponents perplexed. Big vexed. <laughs> nice. Good rhyme. Slick Nick you may the think ruler. It's, you may think it's early. You may think it's early. You may think it's Monday. You may think it's Monday. <laughs> Doesn't Nick, stop me. Nick's brain is turning stop narc. at 240 hertz, which is uh, four times higher than my monitor can go right now. Just fun fact. <laughs>
for now. And I mean, for if, now. if Narc's showing up to play, I'm showing up to play. Okay, I like it. I like it there. That's game one. I wonder where game two will be. And I think uh, you have to say that Vex have brought their A game for sure. Bright Marsh. I love this map. Pretty short. Yep. Pretty stout. Well, Eagle Eye Canessa in game one, she's a very easy just kind of fire starter, right? Gets a pick in that first fight and on the game. And then it's going. And, and it's kind of like, you, what link. else do you really need, I think, from the rest of the composition at that point? OTP, ban out the Drogos. That's where I was headed. I was going to say, let's get World Edit on Drogos if we can. You got first pick here. OTP, definitely smart to ban it away. Well, I think the con here banned leaves OTP with the Inara again if they do want it. But, man, that did not work out the way that they, they were hoping. Metallus, you're starting to see some of the value. I didn't necessarily see it translate because we watched a lot of Narg versus West Side. But I think that Talus World Edit off of that flexibility with the Drogos and the uh, Willow Band specifically was able to do a lot. Grab the Inara as well. Leon's big anti-heal for Inara Furia. See if she ends up coming through here, and it will be Damba instead. So she's she never really made it there on console, right? She was never really, uh, I think, as prioritized as she ever was on PC on the console. Leon, no Who Furia. Oh, Furia, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which absolutely. I don't know why. You know, normally we talk about uh, you know tracking versus flicking versus this versus that mechanics, but there's nothing that should prevent a console player from being as successful with Furia and doing what she does so well on PC. I wonder what I wonder what is up with that. I could see her not being picked up now, at least not prioritized because of the fall off damage nerfs that happened. I mean, Kindle Soul, I think you can get by with, especially if you're still running Solar Blessing. But man, those the damage fall offs, big deal. She's sitting for like 93 when she was for like 200, mm. and so that's a that's, wow. a that's a big deal from uh, far away. Cassie here locked in at the end, and Droxus as well for Vex. Uh, I'm giving this to Vex because they played so well, but what do you guys think? In Mixer Chat, let us know if you think that OTP is going to tie this up and send it to a best of three. I wouldn't put money on it, but I would love to see OTP continue to play well, and, and I think maybe just getting West Side in more of a position to affect the totality of the game, because front lines, they're supposed to really open up space for your damage dealers, but she was getting caught up in a lot of 1v1s. Yeah, you... You know, you got good drafts for both of it for for this team for both got games. Got a great here. draft last game, and they get a decent one here as well. I think it's you know that Yin getting blasted, people getting blasted. Walsh having a really really good game on Canessa last time around. You just kept seeing his name pop up. You see somebody just creep around a corner for a second, and they get their head ripped off, and it's tough to play against that man. It's tough to bounce back. You know, Paladins is a very thoughtful game, and when you really just you miss one thought that the other team has very secured in their mind, like this is what we want to do and here's how we'll execute it. When you just, you think you're thinking of five different angles, but you forget the sixth, that's what gets you. And that is that is one of the things I love about Paladins. One of the things that also makes it very hard if you're just trying to casually chill out and play it, you know, maybe Onslaught, maybe Deathmatch, that's where you need to go. Because uh, you can get caught out in Siege and really just be like, there is no way I'm, I'm getting to the back line. And that was unfortunately their issue last time around. Welsh Mania off the Kinesa. Onto another hit scan form of Androxus playing patiently. I like it. 39% still for Vexed. Floating up over the top here. A lot of movement speed coming, ripping over the high ground. What just the? throwing the hands. Look at the isolation, man. He punches three times, twice doesn't hit anyone. No one even shoots at him. This is rough. Yeah. I mean, all the lethal members were outside. Anara was there, but I don't even know if she really turned to, to give credit. The hands were being tossed. OTP, though. Still solid on the objective, tying it up. Now taking the lead here, 60 to 51. Androxus, give him an inch. He will take a mile, but he's got to get that inch. And he tried to take a little bit, but you could tell he's just not one of those stable champions that can survive anything. Doesn't have that type of mid-range flexibility unless he has the upper hand and definitely hits his shots. A headshot will do that, but he hasn't found many yet. Thatch Tiger, though, has already used the slither. He knows this is danger time. Can't quite hit the reversal. That's a lot of distraction, though. I mean, that's three people that had to come off the objective to get after him. Vex Gaming struggling here, never killing this Inara the entire time, and she has been nowhere else. OTP will grab the first payload. And you can see, man, look at this. It's just, ooh. Welsh Mania finally finds two headshots. That's the first of them. Every single flank he does, distraction can't help the point. And that's that's the problem with Androxus. We've seen, um, I think on this map specifically, Damn. I don't know which map it was, but but they drafted a, a Bodies Androxus man, and it went like 0-9 versus MV. It was not Bright Marsh because I believe that was banned in that set, but you know, it, it, it doesn't always get the job done, but it can in a big, big way. Androxus, one of those guys that's 
a little bit stylistic and just knowing how that player is going to play, where they like to come from, yep. when they like to strike, who they like to attack, and like what angles and all that, all six angles like you mentioned earlier. Knowing all that about a player can make it easier to disarm here. Slopidopoulos does manage to actually take down that Maldamba before exiting. A little bit less of the fans think that Vexed, uh, excuse me, OTP are going to be able to have a shot in this one considering their 4-0 in the last map. But I, I think that so far, many people might be surprised at how well round one went. Welsh Mania didn't find much. Finding West Side now. The defense, clearly, they're getting going. But World Edit, been quiet per usual today. I think his Talus is relatively quiet as well. Welsh has been commanding a lot of attention. Yeah. Well, the Knesset made sense, right? He was just so loud that you couldn't hear anyone else. This one, is, it's a kind of a different story, right? There was room for someone else to step up in that fight. Right. Because, you know, Andrew's just kind of fluttering around in the back line and only managed to get that one kill. And then it felt like nobody else really died. I mean, Inara was there the entire time. You have a Leon with death and taxes. The one kill that I saw was onto that Maldamba, so there should be enough anti-heal to take down that Inara at that point. Slopidopoulos goes down early. On the defense, still 35 seconds. Maybe it's late if you consider the fact that two minutes have gone by and the payload has moved. Getting a little bit of a heal onto Niju. Batch Tiger. 39888. Gotta know what's up with the numbers. Definitely convolutes the name. Might wanna <laughs> might wanna might wanna, you know, think about shortening that. Maybe it's like one of those randomly generated Xbox Live names. Nine. It might be. That is it, you know, Those are so funny, though. Like, it, they, the way they just combine two words. Like, one of my buddies is, like, Livid Volcano. <laughs> and, you know, they end up being kind of cool. Which kind of works, right? Like right. A, like a pissed-off volcano. Yep. It makes sense, yep. I guess, in, in a way. But, God, they're funny. That is uh, one of the things that we'll have to find out later on, maybe in some Twitter research there. And I think Vex Gaming now have a different strategy. Welsh Mania 5-0, definitely all off of that defense there. And right at the start, you saw him get that first kill onto LZ Legends. Uh, actually, it was his second kill after he did take down Badge Tiger earlier on. But relatively slow round for Vex. Yeah, we'll have to see the changes this round. I'd like to honestly see Welsh just do the same thing you're doing. Slopidopoulos, contend with that likely to be Fernando Talis over on the left-hand side or right-hand for this squad's perspective. And then for Leon, just to just keep pelting Inara. You have the anti-heal. There is a Maldamba wanting to play in line of sight of Inara. That makes it that much easier for Welsh to get that pick. It's going to be Slop, though, heads straight to the back line with the Ancient Rage. Pretty aggressive. And yeah, that's what they needed. He's just clearing out that space. Dome Shield used as well. That's quite a lot. Hey. Dread Serpent here trying to slow things down. LZ Legends fighting off with the Makoa, but he's going to get some heals from Ying. And maybe, just maybe, Westside thought that there was a kill that is not there anymore. 54% and counting now. And that's one. Nark finds Legends in the back. The Talus falls. And now Westside looks to be falling as well. Can't find the hook, but Jake Tyloo is perfect hook bait here. If he can get one, he's going to roll away. Come the wall on. comes up. Why not? The hook probably would have killed him at that point. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the positive note of what Vex just did. They they didn't use their ultimates very well, I'll be honest. I mean, they used Ancient Rage and Dome Shield basically at the same time. I'd like to see, if you're going to be that aggressive and decisive, at least spread out your resources a little bit more there. They end up getting that one pick. And because they are such a good team, they can turn that one pick into two and a three, yada, yada, yada. Other teams, that might not necessarily be the case in that matchup, and they would find themselves spending all of their ultimates for, for one kill all at the same time, so not right. even a lot of, you know, lockdown time, period. Right. Where they're in the advantage, but I think Vex managed to just barely pull that off. I mean, you think of a big game Cassie, right, with someone like, uh, I mean, you just take a, a really strong player on that Cassie, and... That Makoa's in trouble. I mean, Slopidopoulos, he creates the space, but he could easily just get bursted. Now it's a 4v5. Yes, your dome shield was there, but it's gone by the time they re-aggress onto you. And uh, that, that doesn't look as pretty. Luckily, it ends up being the Fernando choice to Immortal, to be defensive, to not go back on the attack. Jay Tyloo is just forced to run away. He's been surviving a lot this round, but right now, it has just not really resulted in any defense whatsoever. OTP ready to basically take another point if they do not stand here and stall out. I mean, Welsh is just pure aim at this point has been killing. Ancient Rage is back up. Here comes the Dome Shield. Again? I guess Not so. <laughs> and then West Side, low HP behind his shield. The shield's going to fall here pretty shortly. Slopidopoulos hasn't thrown a hook all game. 
Narc absolutely Will playing out of his mind, dude. I mean, he has to be just hitting so many shots for that to be the case. I guess so. We can check the damage charts here once this round comes to a close. And it will indeed. Maybe just beating up the Zanara like he wasn't in game one. And uh, we're all at it getting, getting into the room here. I think really trying to like finish off some of these things. The Enlightenment connecting is a big deal. Just gets Zanara off the board. Hits a presence that hits two. That forces Jay Tyloo back. Narc at 53k. He's in there. He's in there. Just a fast charging uh, dome shield. It looks weapon. like it, yeah. Maybe there's no real streaks to even shut down. Points. I don't Ooh. think him and Nigel just seconds. beating each other up. Morale boost, Morale maybe? boost, Barrick. I don't doubt it. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> just gets her done. I mean, there isn't. there's no way there's a streak going for OTP. Right, that's what I'm saying. Just Cute. absolutely hitting shots and uh, contesting the payload. Well, hitting your shot's good. Hit your shot's good. That's what matters the most, Kat. And Narc just goes there and says, let me start. Let me get going. Ooh, another double presence there. Could See be ya. the first blood in this round. What? What are you doing? You're trolling, dude. What? You're trolling. <laughs> uh, slide forward and you get the kill. It's no big deal. Then you also get away from Legends. Your team is on that balcony. Yeah, really you can wrap into the point. Spot. Yeah, that was, that was oof. And so definitely gets caught out. And you could tell. I mean, that's how I felt a little bit about World Edit today. The Talus is quiet. The Leon is second. It gets a kill, gets value. But it seems like the Talus is keeping her under wraps. And you got to give credit as well to OTP for doing that, forcing a really good player to feel like Ooh. they don't have all of their things going. Didn't wake up with Nick with a 240 IQ. <laughs> but Vex Gaming, they're going to grab this one 2-0. And that's going to conclude our first game. And that's great. We're going to be able to move to the second one. Vex looking strong. They will be your console representative for that European Xbox region.